What is up guys, Incente here, and I have a really awesome uh, game to show you, uh, focusing on direction of play. And I found out really how great this game was um, by asking one simple question to my opponent. Uh, my opponent was, I don't know if you may know, he's been on stream sometimes, George, uh, he's a six don, he's extremely strong, um, really great guy, and I, he really enjoys sort of playing all of us, so I, I play a lot of games with him. Uh, this particular game was pretty interesting. I got beaten by a lot, as usual, but uh, I asked him a very simple question. And I was like, wait, how many times did you Tanuki in this game? And we went through and counted, and it was barely any times. Uh, he did not Tanuki hardly at all um, in this game, and still beat me by a large, large amount. Um, so I, my hope was that if I can show this to you guys, uh, if you can sort of maybe see uh, this happen in your own games, if your opponent's following you and he's still getting more, that's a really good thing to try to figure out uh, because that means that your direction of play is not great uh, and you didn't make changes when you needed to make changes. So uh, we're going to go through this game and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn a lot. And right uh, below me, I have a Tanuki counter um, right now it's zero. Uh, to uh, see how many times he really does Tanuki. Uh, now we're defining a Tanuki as um, not responding locally to one of my moves. Now, if one of my moves is Gote, then he can play elsewhere. That's not really a Tanuki because, I mean, it's Gote. He doesn't need to respond, so he's free to pick the next point on the board. So we're not counting any moves that I play that are Gote, but um, seeing how many Sente-ish moves I've played uh, that he either played away from or didn't respond to. So uh, let's check this out. Uh, I play black, and I decide to uh, approach, do a large knight's approach. Uh, one of my friends said this was a good way to split the right side or split the left side as black in this opening. So I figured I would try it. Um, white responds. I attach. Mike goes under. I protect my shape. Um, now, I wouldn't say this is playing away as a Tanuki, because technically this Joseki uh, is settled for the most part. Um, if white does play away, um, obviously this would take that white stone, but uh, if white decides to resist, later this might be strong if there was a stone around here, but as it stands now, this is probably not the best thing for black to do. Uh, so this Joseki is fine as is. However, if I get another move in this area, um, then playing away for white is not great because the variation we just saw makes that white stone an Atari. So I'll be able to sweep on under. But as it stands right now, it's, it's a settled Joseki, so we're not gonna count that. So he played away here. I responded. Now this can be considered sente. It's a diagonal and there are follow-ups. There are local follow-ups to this move uh, that he chose to ignore to develop more rapidly. So we're going to we're going to say that is one tanuki. Uh, I responded by extending. He went in. And so rather than He probably wouldn't play this to be fair. He probably wouldn't complete this Joseki. Maybe he would play up but um, I didn't want him to be as comfortable here, so I decided to take advantage of his neglected move uh, right away. So he responded. Uh, there's a shape weakness here uh, that he decided to give to me as a trade. So I got fairly good sized corner and he got a panuki. Uh, he's not leaving the local situation. He's extending because Hane that had two stones is strong, so I have to extend. Uh, now he's actually going to take advantage of the fact that I didn't protect my corner and go in the corner, and I uh, respond. So this move was Gote, so I can't really consider that um, Tanukiing if it's Gote. He's not gonna, you don't need to respond there. So uh, if we look at this move, he's only played one real real Tanuki so far. Um, and the game 
I felt pretty good about this game. I felt my position was good. I felt like I developed well from the left side uh, if I wanted to. Um, but he does have the beginnings of pretty decent sized territory on the right. So I felt pretty good as it stood. He decided to just very calmly take a corner. <clears throat> Not really worrying about my bottom side at all. He's just going to take the corner. And I'm like, okay, uh, I will um, just take the extension here. Uh, theoretically, if I get this move in, uh, that's pretty large. This was actually, this is still a response, because remember that variation that I showed you? Uh, where if, if white doesn't do anything, it, it still works. Uh, I can I can sort of sweep under his stones. So he actually had to respond to this. He did not tanuki from this position, um, and instead solidified his corner here which is good. I didn't want to get sort of crunched, so I made the two-space extension. He decided to just defend his... I mean, that was Gote, right? So he just decided to defend his corner. Uh, still only one Tanuki. I haven't made any... I haven't made any aggressive moves he didn't respond to. So... Now I want to try to build. Right? To build this side. So I play... Uh, sort of at the intersection of two Moyos, threatening to maybe come in and take his territory away if he doesn't respond. I will count this as a Tanuki, because he uh, very strongly plays the shoulder hit. Um, you can imagine if I were to respond and I were to get this, uh, that's a lot of points for black. So I don't think white wants to allow that. So white shoulder hit, and that is one more Tanuki. So we're just going to put that on the counter there. Uh, now we're going to get into some fighting. The opening is basically gone. All the big points are basically done. So now the groups uh, begin to fight. Uh, he lightly jumps away. If you guys don't know how to respond lightly, uh, if you're shoulder hitting inside your opponent's sort of next to your opponent's strength, this is a great lesson on that. Uh, watch what he does. Um, I threaten to come in and split. He one space jumps to the side now. So now, even taking the stone still splits me. So it's really great shape. A really great shape. Definitely learn it. Um, I tried to surround on the outside, maybe get some influence. Uh, he responds by extending. And I needed to cut. Definitely needed to cut. I needed to cut and fight here. There, if I could, if I let White get this point, these two stones became very weak. However, I was a little. The corner looked really nice to try to uh, take for myself, uh, and I did not really consider the safety of these two stones or really the rest of the board. Uh, so I kind of just uh, made a passive play here. Again, it was still threatening though. I'm um, threatening to do some cuts and threatening to take away his group away. So he filled responded to me by, you know, filling in that point, getting connected. Now I can still push here, right? That's still there, but it's not big enough right now, so I'm not going to play it. Um, but these two stones are very hurt. So I try to help them from long distance. Uh, he responds to me uh, by attaching. And now double Hane. So this is really interesting. Um, if I simply follow... Can go and now the more strength he gets over here uh the more hurt he's putting on these two stones um i saw that and so i was like all right i guess i'll try to change directions and come under his territory he connects i connect he takes the point over top uh makes sense because he wants these to be as isolated as possible and to grow his influence i push through he is he's still responding to me still responding I connect. Still not Gote. He still defends the cut. So he, he's still responding locally to all of my moves. Um, we've only got two hard Tanukis so far. The rest were just taking big points after a Gote exchange by me. Uh, so I poke at some shape. He responds. Uh, I try to help out my stones. He responds. At this point, I, I realize I'm not going to get them back unless something drastic changes, so I try to use them and sacrifice them and develop points on this side. 
Uh, this was not a great move for me. I should definitely play here uh, because the follow-up is very strong. This is an Atari, and I can split. So white would totally not ignore that. Play here, here, here. Uh, then I can defend, and I've got some good territory, or play something else. Uh, I played a pretty subpar move there. Uh, white got... Now this is probably the, what sealed the deal in terms of how... Um, in terms of my victory being just destroyed. Uh, he said it was already pretty lost after this exchange, uh, but this really sealed it, because this is such a huge point to grab. Um, and if you don't understand that right away, uh, just consider, you know, if black gets this point. If black gets this point, there's no way white can seal him in, and white really can't develop a lot from the influence. If white tries to sort of make a shoulder hit, um, I mean, I don't know what white's expecting to get here. Black can just keep pushing, and this is really not going to amount to much territory uh, because of this poking stone. Now watch what happens after after my Gote move, uh, and he plays here. I try to Hane, he Hanes. I have no choice but to uh, extend down, I try to do this, uh, he does that that, that, and I've just, I've still got a bunch of cutting points. Might have been better off than the actual game, but uh, in the end, I, I did not uh, respond aggressively <clears throat> and just um, descend down because I thought, oh, this is some good territory, this will be fine. And so now comes the realization that he's going to make so many points here. Um, I'm going to try to fight it as hard as I can. He's going to do some cuts. And I came up with a sequence. I found that there's a shortage of liberties. So if he extends, I can actually play here. That's an Atari. And I get my stones back. So at least there's something. I got those back. But in exchange, I sacrificed a lot. He's still responding locally to me. Uh, and that was a Gote move, so now he's going down. Down and down, and just sealing off the end game because he's probably already found out that he has enough points to win, so he's fine. Um, this wasn't Sente for me, so that was Gote, so he gets that other point. Uh, I decide to take the stone. <clears throat> uh, so he doesn't make any moves to actually keep trying to poke in, so I can consider that a Tanuki. A lot of people would actually... A lot of people would have made this exchange first, uh, but he ignored it, so we're going to call that Tanuki. He actually took this really big endgame point, which was really good. Uh, just some Don Lo just six Don level endgame end shenanigans. It's probably worth like one point better than original. But I'm sure everyone can pretty much see that by now the game is horribly not working in my favor. After some great endgame pushes, and now uh, these double large knights, there's just really nothing more to do. He's won by so many points. 27 and a half to be exact. So uh, I got sort of butt whooped in this game. And the interesting thing is if we look at our counter, he really only played away from a aggressive move or a sente move of mine uh, three times. That could mean one or two things. That could mean I was not playing enough uh, dual purpose forcing moves. Uh, too many of my exchanges ended in Gote. Or my direction of play was so bad that going along with my moves ended up working out fine for him. Uh, probably a little bit of both. And this is really interesting to me because he really did not seem to, the only move that I felt like he played that resisted something that I wanted to do was this move, uh, the shoulder hit here, uh, taking away this influence. This was the only thing that I saw during this game uh, that he that felt like he was actively trying to take something away that I was trying to build. The rest was just, oh, uh, I'm gonna extend over here. Okay, I'll take the corner that you left behind, sort of ideas. Um, but everything that he played really was a local response. Responding to my knight's move, 
responding to my pushes underneath, responding to the cut, generating strength to attack these two stones, responding to the attempted connection, responding to the shoulder hit. And this was a Gote exchange, and he got this really big point. And now he was just driving me down, but he's still we're still playing locally. This was Gote, and so now he took so he he took a few key Gote moments uh, to completely get thirty points out of nowhere. Um, that one Gote push here, not there, there, uh, followed by these moves, and then that one uh, I I had Gote on this move, so then he was able to play this one. So those two uh, Gote moves that I had left allowed him to just generate this winning board state. Um, and he didn't need to give something up or ignore a move that I was threatening um, to take Sente to do it. He was just able to take his Gote opportunities and use them correctly. And his direction of play was so good that uh, the game was pretty much over. So I thought this was a really cool idea. And so uh, I encourage you, when you play your games, uh, to look at how many times they broke the flow and uh, played elsewhere when you played something you thought was Sente. If they did that not a lot of times and you still lost, Assuming, assuming nothing died horribly in the process. Um, that could mean your direction of play uh, is not as strong as it should be and needs to be improved. Um, this was a very clear wake-up call for me that my direction of play is awful because he basically gave me everything that I wanted um, and just took the big points when I left them for him to take. So I think this is a, a really interesting uh, idea. Um, you know, figuring out when these players take Sente versus not. And if you ever play somebody uh, much stronger than you, like a Don player or something, um, definitely keep track of that. See how many times they actually play away from your moves. Um, you can learn when your moves are slow, or you can learn that it's fine if they go to, with your plan because you're pushing them towards a victory because of direction of play problems. Uh, I could go on, but in an effort to keep the video short, like everybody likes, I'm gonna stop here. Um, hope you, your eyes got a little bit open to how important direction of play is, and not everything your opponent plays uh, needs to be resisted. You can see very cl clearly here that sometimes the best thing to do is to just go along with what your opponent wants, because your opponent is actually helping you win, <laughs> in my case. So really cool things to think about. Really cool things to think about. I uh, hope you learned some stuff, and I uh, look forward to making the next video. Good luck and see you on the grid.